Hey everybody, today we are channeling Princess Diana and this was requested from my last video and I have I have some questions from there and uh, some of my own. So I'm thinking this time we're going to try and go a little bit deeper and ask a little more difficult questions slightly while still respecting our guests. So I want to thank you for the comments. Please keep the questions coming. So if you have suggestions for another guest or you have questions for that you want me to ask spirit, uh, do write them down in the comments so I know what to channel. It's better when the questions come from you because that way I won't get the answers beforehand because when I want to know, then I just know. So it's better if you ask the questions and we can, I can make sure that you get what you want. So before I get into that, I want to give you a reminder that the, if you want to learn how to channel or if you want to develop your intuitive gift or if you have an interest in working as a psychic or a channeler, uh, then we have a course coming up on the 19th of February. Uh, it's my channeling course where I put all the information that you're going to need to uh, develop your psychic skills, develop your channeling gifts, and uh, if you want, you can work with it professionally. So I give the instructions for what to keep in mind when you do it professionally as opposed to when you just do it for yourself or people that you know. And um, uh, a huge emphasis on this or the whole direction of the course is going to be how to do it safely and how to do it in a way that is positive and uplifting because that is the main pitfall with this work. So when you just go into it uh, without the certain understanding of what to do to keep it safe, um, you're kind of open to all kinds of energies and that is why people are really afraid to channel and tend not to do it or tend not to develop their psychic skills because they're afraid to open up their energy for all these random things. Uh, that's a really, really valid concern. I am very cautious of the, not cautious, I don't need to be cautious at this point. Uh, as long as you know what to do or, or how to do it, uh, it's going to be safe and protected. So I'm going to, um, the way that I teach you is going to be really focused on how to do it in a way that is uplifting and in alignment with your highest good and the people that you channel for their highest good. Because... Uh, uh, why do it any other way, right? Okay, so let's get into it and let's start with our questions for Princess Diana. Let's just first invite her in. Okay, she's here. She was waiting because we had a little conversation earlier. <laughs> Hi, Diana. Okay, she's happy to be here, but she has been a little bit um, apprehensive. So she, unlike Michael Jackson, who wanted to be here and who wanted, who really like made himself uh, available and like even cut in line because I was going to do Marilyn Monroe, uh, but Michael wanted to speak. So he came first. But um, Diana is a little apprehensive. Why is that, Diana? There has been so many questions around her life and her death. Uh, and she doesn't like the attention that much still she doesn't like the attention that much she was she felt very she felt that her privacy was really invaded in life and she feels that it's less after her death but there is still a lot of um, curiosity around her okay but we appreciate that you're here and people love you and that's why they want to feel closer to you. She, she says she knows and she appreciates that. She appreciates that it comes from a good place, but she's mindful that she wants it to be well-intentioned and kind and respectful. Okay, that's the intention for today, Diana. I hope... Hope you'll be satisfied. Okay, let's start with the first question. Did you have a purpose for society, considering the fact that you had such a big impact on our collective psyche? Was there a grander purpose with your life that was a purpose for, for society as a whole? Yes, for women. 
I made women realize their role in their marriage. I made them question the things that didn't feel right for them in their marriage. I gave them power to speak up for themselves and ask for more. I strengthened the role of women in society Was there anything else that was the purpose for society of your life? To a lesser extent, it was the social causes that I shed a light on. I went to hospitals and I cared for the sick to shed light on the importance of caring for those that are weak at a time when people viewed sick people as something disgusting or, some, or something to be avoided because of HIV. People didn't have much compassion or enough compassion for those that were going through it. And these people were very vulnerable and they needed support and they weren't getting it. What else was there? I was involved in a lot of social causes regarding also children because I wanted to shed light on or remind people of the need to be gentle and caring with our children and not be so harsh or insensitive but to remember to nurture them and find common ground with the children and find the playful side and the sensitive side in all of us so that we could relate to the children and understand their needs. I also tried to shed light on international conflicts but it was I was limited in how I could do that because I knew there were bigger powers involved and that they would not stray from their purpose there was a lot of money and resources to be gained from these conflicts for some people in power. I could not address that, but I tried to hint at it. There was a fear from some people in power that I would reveal what I know. I knew I couldn't, but I wanted to hint at it or give people clues. One example is the landmines in Angola but also other ones, other conflicts. I'm going to get in more um, to the landmines in Angola because that's something I wanted to know. So she gave that as an example, but she's saying there were more. Okay, a lighter question. What was it like 
to become a princess. Even though you were close to the royal family before, but what was it like to become a princess? It was every girl's dream. It was really like a fairy tale in the beginning. And it was an illusion, just like a fairy tale. I was lured by the illusion and the fairy tale. But once I was inside, I saw some ugliness and I saw the reality of it. Most of which was new to me. I was very naive. I didn't have a lot of life experience. I had lived a very protected life. I could not accept or tolerate some of what I saw and understood inside. What was it like? Tell me more about what it was like to be a princess. I suddenly had a voice or a power to influence. In the beginning, I didn't realize the power in that. It was very personal in the beginning. It was just about me and my marriage and my family. I didn't know how much power I had or the potential I could have. I tried with my marriage, with my limited experience and understanding. I was not experienced enough to understand how to deal with married life or the challenges that come with that. What do you mean by that? Had I been more mature, my marriage could have worked out better. So you mean it wasn't Charles's fault? Charles made mistakes, but had I been more mature, I could have reacted differently or mitigated some of it. But I was chosen specifically for my inexperience and naivety. I was picked to have a small role and not make too much noise and to not cause trouble. That's why my naivety and inexperience got me in. But they didn't know that my sensitivity could turn into power Okay. Next question. Do you have any regrets? Yes. I know my life had a purpose. 
And from a higher point of view, it all worked out the way that was best. But if I enter my human point of view, I wish I could be there for my sons. I wish I could have been there for my sons. I wanted to love them more. I wanted them to have my love and presence through their entire upbringing. Any other regrets? I Oh, this is confusing. Please be more clear, Diana. I have regrets towards Charles. I wish I could have been more understanding. I looked up to him and assumed he had all the answers. And when he made mistakes, I took it very harshly. I wish I could have understood that he was just as scared and that he didn't have the answers either. I wish I could have seen him as, as fallible as myself. I wish I could have been more understanding towards him. I wish I hadn't said such harsh words, but rather tried to understand him better. I believed that the hurt I was feeling from him was him intentionally hurting me. I now know that he just didn't know what to do and it was not personal and it was not intentional. In fact, he tried to avoid it. He was also limited in his actions and what he could do due to his position. Okay. Was there any foul play involved in your death? And if it's an uncomfortable question, you don't have to answer. She's laughing. Of course there was, she says. Explain. She says, most people know, know it and understand it. What happened in the tunnel around the accident has not been reported correctly. There was a lot more that happened there that has not been reported. They have omitted a lot of things when they report when they reported about what happened during the accident. Things that were said and things that happened. Hmm. So what was the foul play? Many more people knew about what happened or what was going to happen than they are telling you. Are you saying that some people knew what was going to happen? Yes, there was preparation for it. 
there was not a certainty that it would succeed. But there was a conscious attempt. And at least three people that were at the scene knew. Okay. Okay, so who um, who was behind it? It came from the top. I don't know if I can say it. Can I say it, Diana? Okay, I better not say it. Okay. It came from the top. Somebody at the top was advised to give the, not the orders, but the consent or the approval for this. Mm. the person at the top did not come up with the idea and would have preferred not to have this happen, but they understood that it was necessary and they were on board because it was necessary. Okay, why did they feel that it was necessary, Diana? I was getting too powerful I was no longer under their thumb. I no longer had a strong loyalty to them. And this could jeopardize the princess's future decision-making. In other words, my influence could make the princes stray from their duties and that could jeopardize the future of the monarchy. Was that all, or were there other? That was all. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. I just want to continue on that for a bit. No, it's not coming. Okay. What is your advice for Megan and Kate, the wives of the princess? What is your advice for them? Be happy. Oh, it's different for the different girls. So for Kate, it's be happy, be more joyful, be more lighthearted and make your life more enjoyable you deserve happiness let go of the things that weigh you down let go of the heaviness and for Megan you are doing very well But do keep in mind that the system you married into has a long history. And there are things you must keep in mind 
it's not as easy as you think. What else for Megan? It's okay to be more involved. You could have a lot of power from the inside. You could use that for the benefit of the people. You could have more power that way. Okay, any guidance for the princes or any message for your sons? For William, lighten up. She's saying, lighten up, darling. Yes, you have a lot of responsibilities. But you can also look for the things that make you happy. You can also make your life feel lighter. I love you. I love you always. And I'm seeing a heart connection between them, a very strong heart connection. Her love is very strong and he can feel it. For Harry, I love you. You're doing really well, you little rebel. Enjoy your life. You're doing well. With Harry, I didn't sense as strong a connection, so I feel like Harry perhaps doesn't feel the love from his mother as much and as clearly from the other side as William does. He could if he wanted to, it's there for him, the love is there for him, but I feel like he's not tapping into it. Uh, okay, <clears throat> what motivated your work against landmines in Angola? I saw the abuses It was like open season. The country was being stolen from without any limitations. I couldn't stop it, but my work did make it a little harder. People did start to look into it more. And that set some limitations for the people who were doing the stealing. They had free access to very valuable resources. And the people of the country had no protection against it. What did you achieve with that work? Awareness. I didn't stop anything. But as a result of my work there, Things were put into motion, and the situation is somewhat different today. More people are aware of the injustices, and there have been some limitations put in place. 
and the stealing and the abuses of their resources have lessened. Okay. Thank you, Diana. Okay. Here's a more controversial question, but feel free to not answer if you don't feel okay about it. Were you unfaithful to Charles? She doesn't want to answer this. Are the princes... Um, is Charles the father of the princes? She does not want to comment on that. Okay. I respect that. Thank you, Diana. Okay. And last question. What do you want to say to those listening? What is your message to those listening? Please respect my privacy. Okay, I guess that was in response to my previous question. Of course, Diana. Um, love my sons. They, their power is limited because they belong to a very old establishment and they are very restricted in what they may or may not do. They are doing the best within their limited, within the limitations that surround them. Not every action they take is a free one. Keep that in mind. Their wives are good influences on them. They give them some breathing space from their responsibilities and their restrictions. What do you want to say to society in general? Women, you're not there yet. You have to keep empowering yourselves and speak up for yourselves. Domestic violence is still a big problem. What else? What do you want to say about that? Domestic violence is a fact. And women need to speak up because they will not be heard unless they speak up about it. Nobody will come and ask them unless they speak up about it. It will not be brought up unless you speak up for yourself. It will empower you. What else do you want to say to society? There are still grave injustices. In Africa, coming from powerful people in outside of Africa, there is still an imbalance of power. There is still stealing going on. There is still an abuse of power towards many African countries. That is a major reason why multiple African countries are struggling. It is an intentional 
abuse of power. Don't get fooled by charity PR events like what is that thing that Bono does? That Bono thing. The singing. I don't remember the name. But she's showing me that. Don't be fooled by these PR strategies. Their purpose is not to change the injustice. Their purpose is to mislead you as to the reason for the injustices. What else do you want to say? Any guidance? Oh, that was it for now. Thank you, Diana. This was a very enlightening conversation. I hope I could do you justice. She's saying thank you. I keep my integrity. But I said the things that were important for me to say. And you must respect my integrity and desire for privacy. I hope I could do that, Diana. Yes. Thank you very much. She's saying thank you to everybody listening. Okay, that's it. And uh, yeah, she clearly did uh, want her privacy respected. Uh, and of course, we respect our guest. But I'm really grateful for what she did offer to answer. Now, uh, we have about uh, a week and a half left of the special offer on the channeling course. So if you are interested in learning to do this or learning to do psychic readings or you've been wanting to work with this line of work or you just want to develop your sixth sense, uh, it's a great time to get the offer of, um, you know, it's the standard price is $499 and for another week and a half, about until the 19th of February, let me put it that way. Until the 19th of February, it is 149. And even if you buy it now, it's going to be available first on the 19th of February. And if you're not happy for whatever reason, you have 30 days to, to get your money back. <clears throat> no questions asked. We're not going to question why. You don't have to have a valid reason. You could just have changed your mind or, you know, maybe it wasn't what you expected or whatever. You have 30 days. So there's no risk involved. Um, yeah, so now is a good time to get it at the heavy discount because after the 19th, it's back to $499 um, and you get, you know, it's the same course. So you, you decide whether you want the reduced price or the full price. Thank you so much for listening and taking part in these. This is all for you guys. Uh, I'm really hoping that this was valuable and uplifting and uh, that it gave you something. Uh, if you have any questions or any suggestions for a future guest, do put it into the comments. And if you're suggesting a guest, also tell me what kind of questions you would want to ask them because uh, the quality uh, of the channeling really does uh, rely on uh, the quality of the questions. So we can only get the answers to the things that we ask. So do tell me what you would want to ask to whoever you would want to ask it to. Thank you so much for participating. I totally appreciate it. Bye.